As a teacher, have you ever been asked, when will we ever use this? Or why do we need to learn this? Of course you have. And you probably responded with some type of real world application of the lesson that you were trying to instruct. What if you never had to answer those types of questions in the classroom ever again? I wish. What if the real world application of the lessons were built into the learning targets? That sounds great. What if the class was graded based upon performance instead of memorization of facts? Okay, now you're making stuff up. You can have all of those things by integrating authentic assessment into your curriculum. Hold up, wait a minute. By into what in the who's what now? Integrating authentic assessment. What's authentic assessment? It's a type of assessment that measures student learning according to the application of skills during the performance of a real world task. I still don't understand. How would that look in the classroom? Well, ELA students may use writing skills to draft a letter to their local congressman concerning community issues. Math students may use proportional reasoning to create a scale model of their own city. Social studies classes may use research skills to reenact a historical event. Science students may conduct water testing to ensure safe drinking water. So it's like letting students demonstrate knowledge by doing? Exactly. Well, how do I know that an assessment I made is authentic? Well, first, it must be challenging. Bring on the rigor. Second, the outcome should be a performance or some type of finished product. Third, it must encourage learners to apply knowledge to real world situations. Fourth, it must encourage students to monitor their own learning through self-evaluation. And fifth, it must provide an opportunity for students to collaborate together, discuss, and receive feedback on their work. Whew, that sounds like a lot of work. Authentic assessment requires careful planning, but the benefits far outweigh the time sacrificed. Well, how can I give a numeric grade for authentic assessment? Well, via rubric by assigning point values to the components of the product or performances as they align with particular standards. Students will know before they begin what is necessary to receive the highest number of points. This sounds far better than having my students regurgitate every note that they have ever written for a test. You bet. In fact, I'm reminded of a saying by Confucius. I hear and I forget. I see and I remember, but I do and I understand. That's authentic as Today I'm going to be talking about blended learning environment and what is blended learning. First off, it's a fairly complex model, so I'm going to divide my presentations in two parts. Part one, I'm going to talk about what is blended learning in general, and part two will be about the benefits of such a learning environment. So, part one, what is blended learning? Well, it's a combination of two models. The first one, we all know it. Teacher, students, a regular classroom setting with the board. Basically, the teacher is delivering content and leading the instruction. It's the traditional model that has been in place for a long time, with the teacher facing the students and the students facing the teacher in a brick and mortar school setting. This model is called a face-to-face -face model since we are facing each other in the physical world. So, this is the first component of the blended learning, that very traditional model of instruction. Now, something happens, and we all know it, it's called internet, and that changed a few things. Now students can access content online, cloud-based, which means they do not need to be in school anymore to access instruction or to actually work together with a teacher. And that changed a few things. They can work at home, in a coffee place. They can actually almost work in the school bus on the way to school. Wherever they are, as long as they have internet, they can access that content. This model is called online teaching since you are learning and teaching online. It's a very common model in higher education these days. So, what is blended learning? Well, it's a combination of those two models, the face-to-face -face model and the online teaching model. Now, let's have a look at an example. You're going to have students watch a presentation, and they can be watching that presentation 
on blended learning, for example. With cloud-based devices, they do not need to be in school anymore to hear your lecture. They can watch your presentation pretty much anywhere and wherever they are, as long as they can access that content. And then you can have a discussion on that presentation in school with a teacher monitoring the exchanges and leading higher thinking activities. This is not just about discussions though. It could be a group project, it could be a writing assignment. All those tasks can be conducted in both environment, face-to-face -face in school and slash or online on internet. Blended learning is a combination of those two models. So what blended learning is about is how much you want your teaching to happen online and how much you want it to be face-to-face. -face. It could be a teacher or a school decision as well. What matters the most though is to create a community of learners where students can exchange, discuss, and work together on both environments, face-to-face -face and online. What are the benefits?